Today we're going to take a look at the Chipset Water Block by Watercool. And this one's called the Heat Killer South Bridge Revision 3.0. We're going to link to that down in the video description below if you want to check it out. We used Jella GC Extreme between the Water Block and the Chipset. So here we're checking out the temperatures during some light system loads. But let's ramp things up a little bit. A little bit. I'm gonna let some heat accumulate. A little bit. The water cool heat killer. Here we have the game running. We have a music player in the background. We're changing tracks in the music player. So here we're going to open up 306 tabs in Chrome browser across eight different windows. All at the same time. So let's fire this up. Let's see what happens. See if our heat killer water block on the chipset can keep that chipset cool. A little bit. Here as it's loading, the CPU workload is increasing dramatically. We can take a look over here at this monitor and all the cores are pretty much getting saturated, all heavily engaged. So we're going to take a look at the chipset temperature as we cycle through 306 tabs across eight windows in the Chrome browser. And you can see. See? We're not getting any interruptions on the mouse or the keyboard. Everything is maintaining functionality. No sound splutter. No video flutter. Smooth as butter. Butter. Let's open up a game, increase the workload on the GPU and the CPU, and take a look back at these temperatures. Let's do a Hitman 2 benchmark in Mumbai. We're transitioning between the desktop and the game back and forth. We're checking the temperatures. We have HW info running. Let's keep an eye on those temperatures. We have an audio player going in the background using the PCIe 3 slot that's also going through the PCH on this motherboard for our EVGA New Audio Pro. Sound card. The Pure Copper Water Block comes with two different mounting brackets. These brackets are diagonal brackets, so you only have to have two connection points match on your chipset, heat sink, screw holes. Unlike a GPU or CPU water block where it usually attaches with four screws around the processor, this one just needs two connection points to line up. And if you can get two of them to line up diagonally, then you can attach this to your motherboard. Okay, so we have it going from the radiator to the GPU, coming out of the GPU 
from two different outlets on the GPU water block. So on the top outlet, we're going to the CPU. On the bottom outlet, we're going to the chipset, the water cool heat killer. The water cool heat killer. Heat killer. Keep your old heat sink in case you ever want to sell your motherboard. You can put it back on. Just tap it into the rest of your cooling loop. But you are going to have to have the GPU water cooled as well. Because we've tried to fit some smaller GPUs in the system with this chipset water block installed. And they're just not going to go. Because the fan shroud and those big heat sinks that come on the stock GPUs. They're just too big to fit into the PCIe slot with the chipset water block on. If you have a water cooled GPU this is definitely an option. the center of the steel bracket. They're cut out. You can slide the bracket up and down diagonally to try to get it to match with two of the screw holes. Put the screws through the water block side. Put the nylon washers on the backs to give it some padding between the motherboard and the nut that you're gonna use to screw down the water block. Screw it down. But some of the motherboards have different diameter screw holes around the chipset. So you may need slightly smaller screws for certain motherboards. Like the MSI Meg Ace, the screws that came with the water cool heat killer were fine. They fit oh, so the screw cutouts on the motherboard. But on the Azeroth Z690 Tai G, the screws were smaller. So they were like, I'd have to see what size M2. The Tai Chi had M2 screw holes as opposed to the M3 that come with the water cool heat killer. So you're going to need to possibly get some aftermarket screws to get it to fit certain motherboards. Then once you put the screws to the front of the water block, go to the back of the motherboard, put those nylon washers on, then screw down the nut. And then once you screw down the nut, you just have to be careful to alternate screwing each nut so you try to get equal pressure on each nut as you're screwing them down give one a couple of turns and go back to the other one give that one a couple of turns to keep alternating back and forth so that you're getting even pressure as you're tightening down on the rear of the motherboard just get it firm get it nice and tight but not so tight that you end up cracking your motherboard One of the downsides that we noticed was the Phillips head screws on the bottom of the cold plate. These screws attach the cold plate to the top half of the water block. Then it sandwiches the bracket between both halves. And then there's a rubber gasket between both of those halves to keep them from leaking. Well, those screws on the bottom of the cold plate, they seem to strip pretty easily. One of them we had strip and we were a little bit concerned of whether we were going to get it back, get it tightened down correctly. We were able to, but just make sure you use caution. Choose a screwdriver that seems to fit in there really well. Don't choose one that's too sharp or narrow because um, these screw heads, they seem to be pretty weak or pretty malleable metal. So they can strip out. And if you wanted to, you could measure them to see what size they are and order some harder steel ones if that's something that you're concerned about. You may not even have to take the water block apart, period, because if the bracket that comes pre-installed 
on the water block, fit your setup with your two diagonal screw holes on your motherboard, then you don't even need to take it apart. We took it apart for the demo to get some footage of the inside. I don't remember if we had to change the bracket or not that was on there. I don't think we did for the MSI Meg Ace. We can see here the chipset temperatures are staying pretty stable in that low 30 Celsius range.